On today's podcast of completely normal things any other human being across the world does, which the Daily Fail and other UK tabloids would love you to be angry about, apparently Megan, Duchess of Sussex, has apparently filed a trademark for the name Archetypes for her podcast. As you know, Megan's podcast at Spotify has finally gained a lot, a lot of traction. I'm waiting for it. We all are waiting for, for it. To start, it begins and starts in the summer, and we are all waiting for it. Now, Megan's podcast is called Archetypes, and Archetypes is a historic word, and it's been in use for centuries. And today, I went through, you know, Twitter, because normally my timeline is full of, you know, just about Megan. Normally, what I'm interested in is Megan. That's the only thing that I'm interested in. Interested in in Twitter. I basically just go ahead to Twitter and just look, you know, at what's trending, what's being talked about. And I wanted to hear something. And I found out that fact that they were talking about Megan. And what is it that they were saying about Megan? They were talking about this trademark. The fact that Megan has filed a trademark for the term, for the name, the word, archetypes, for her podcast. And they've said that Megan apparently is commandeering the English name, the level of entitlement that the tabloids feel, and even some people in the UK, the fact that they still believe that we still live in the age of the British Empire, where we have a British Empire with the monarchy at the top, you know, ruling over colonies. The UK that has set the largest number of Independence Days from all across the world, Yes, the UK, they still believe the fact that they still have an empire because that no wonder the royal family keeps on giving these awards called, you know, an MBE of the British Empire. That's how they continue to do to this day. And apparently it's still ringing into the UK tabloids the fact that they still believe they live in the British Empire where they control what black people do, what they say, what they attempt to do with their businesses because right now UK tablets are trying to poke their noses into what Megan is doing. I mean, they always do that. But this time, they're poking their noses and trying to generate outrage over something which is completely normal. That every single person from all across the world, whether you are, you are starting your own brand, which you will do, any normal person would do. Because today, before I went to the university, I was watching, you know, Keeping Up with the Kardashian while I took my breakfast. You know, I was watching, you know, the Kris Jenner was saying something. The mom of Kylie Jenner, Kendall Jenner, Kim Kardashian, Khloe Kardashian, and Kourtney Kardashian. I was watching something and she said this, that I filed an application for the word momager. Momager. And, you know, she's a mom to Kim, Kylie, Courtney, Chloe, for those who watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians. So Chris Jenner, for those who watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and I watch from time to time. So I'm sorry about that. I really like, you know, sometimes watching about their lives. So sometimes when I'm watching Eating Breakfast, I'm watching it. So something happened today. Let me go straight to the point. She said that she trademarked the word manager. She's the manager of, you know, Kim Kardashian, Chloe Kardashian, and Courtney Kardashian, her children, that is, basically. And she's also the manager who manages their businesses, their business endeavors, the sponsorship deals that the children get. She manages them. And so she trademarked the word momager to protect that because that's who she is. And it's completely normal. It's nothing new. Every single person does it. So why do I say that Megan trademarking the word, the term archetypes is normal? I say it's normal to name, you know, archetypes, to use the name archetypes to trademark it. Because if these tabloids that currently are attacking Megan or trying to generate outrage because Megan trademarked the name, the term, the word archetypes, if these people were actually interested in reporting in good faith, which we know they never ever do when it comes to Megan, they would have found a list of trademarked names called archetypes, of which there are about 176 minimum, according to my personal research. 
I mean, maybe they don't understand how trademark works, but I don't buy that. I believe that they do because they really fail, for instance, has a large number of lawyers and he spends most of his time in court because that's what we learned when Megan won a case against the Daily Fail. The Daily Fail actually was, according to a report by Byline Times, they said that the Daily Fail spends most of its time in court. So they practically live in court because of what they constantly do. So if they were interested in just doing a simple research before attacking Megan over doing something which is completely normal, that is trademarking the name, the term, the word, archetypes, they would have found out that there are 176 names, words called archetypes that have been trademarked. Now, but these are just commonly used words. But let me assume, let me assume the fact that they don't know how trademark works. So let me help them. Because you are able to trademark commonly used words for the context within which you will be using them. So, for example, we have archetypes. Barbershop, for instance. And in the context of someone who owns a barbershop business, that's actually a trademark that I saw that someone else has. And this time for Megan, Megan will be trademarking the term, the word, in the context of the podcast, so no one else will be able to use or call their podcast archetypes. Now, I hope this table is correct, what they've been saying about, you know, at Megan attempting to commandeer the English name called archetypes. These words don't belong to you. They don't belong to you. Look at Apple, for instance. There's a lot of apples. We all eat apples. And Apple has trademarked the word Apple for its, you know, computers, its iPhones. They've trademarked Apple for the different products that they currently sell. It's completely something which is normal. They might not be able to use it in terms of, you know, food, but they've used it in terms of technology. And we all call Apple what it is, you know, a huge company, a huge trillion dollar company. So for those who don't understand, including this, you know, for these tabloids that don't understand, these tabloids who don't understand, they need to understand and get it right now. And I'll repeat it. I'll say this. Megan will be trademarking the words in the context of the podcast that is called Archetypes. I will feature, you know, women and the stereotypes used against women. So no one else will be able to use or call their podcast Archetypes. According to my investigation, I found out that there are trademarks for Archetype, Barbershop. There are different kinds of trademarks, which is someone who calls themselves a journalist will be able to find in less than three seconds. What Megan is doing is filing a trademark, Archetype's podcast, for in the context of the podcast that she will be airing and coming out this summer. So no one else will be used to use the name archetypes in the context of the podcast. You won't be able to use it in Spotify or name your podcast after archetypes because that Megan has already trademarked the name. She's currently in the process of trademarking the, the, the word archetypes. That's something that I just wanted to correct in this podcast for the daily fail that has been misleading so many, many people and trying to generate outrage. If you simply did 10 minutes research, you'll be able to find this out. You'll find the time that there is a trademark for Archetype's Barbershop. You'll find that from all across the world. You know, you can easily find the trademark. Easily, very, very easily. It doesn't take someone 10 minutes. So for someone working for the Daily Fail who have been banned by Wikipedia for an un as an unreliable source, you can understand the fact that they just wanted to generate outrage and insult Megan with every single opportunity that they attempt to look for, which is what they normally do time and time again. So I just had to correct that because this is something that I had to definitely, definitely talk about. Because another thing that riled me up today is the fact that someone in the UK, someone working for a tabloid 
in the UK. And this, you know, this shows on UK. We know that they normally go after Megan. That, that's nothing new. They normally do it every single time. And they normally, most of them just read the Daily Fail. So the Daily Fail's job is to simply generate outrage. Outrage equals clicks. That's how they normally operate. That's their business model operandi. And so what happened today was the fact that they had made some sort of a fake show graphic with the label archetypes. And then some of them were angry at the fact that they won't be able to use that name. Like, like seriously, seriously, because I'm going to be honest with each and every single one of you. I, I won't lie to you. I've, I didn't even know the word, the term archetypes until I Googled it myself. And to see some of them openly mocking us saying, and making, you know, fake show graphics of the term archetypes just showcases the reason the reason Harry and Megan had to leave the UK. Because some of them have gone so far as, you know, going after a little bit Diana and Archie, saying that Megan could have named the name archetypes and all of that. The level of entitlement and this hate obsession that these people have towards Megan is a level of sickness that I have never seen in my entire life. And that every single day, when I see things like that, it reinforces my need to constantly, always defend Megan, that is of Sussex, for, from those kinds of people that I saw today. I won't mention names, but I did see that today. I did see that today. And I this Megan hate obsession is becoming a UK, is already practically a UK national embarrassment. And I'm glad that these kinds of shows are only broadcast in Britain because they are cringe. They are very much cringe. They are not, they're not, they're not cool and they're not okay. And Harry said the truth. The UK media is indeed bigoted, as he said that in the Oprah interview, and that's a fact. If they don't understand what trademark means, perhaps they should contact lawyers. And even after they called a lawyer into their show. They understand. They told them the fact that trademarking names is something that is completely normal. They, every single person does it. Protect their brands. Every single person does it. As I told you today, even when I was watching Keeping Up, Keeping Up with the Kardashians today, I had I stumbled upon Kris Jenner saying that she had trademarked the name, the, the word Marmager. So, these pirates with press cards, they have to constantly display their ignorance for everyone to see, just to throw an insult and mock Megan and even target their children. And every single day, it just reinforces and backs up the necessity of why Harry and Megan had to flee and leave the UK to protect their mental health from this, what I keep on seeing occurring frequently. It was a necessity for Harry and Megan to leave. And I'm glad that they left. Because these tabloids, they just cannot keep Harry and Megan's name out of their mouths. Because if they did simple research, just a simple research, five minutes, it didn't take me 10 minutes to discover that there is the Archetypes Barbershop that has been trademarked. It didn't take me five minutes to discover that. In the context of the fact that that person... No one else can now use the term, the term Archetypes Barbershop from all across the U.S. No one else can use that because it's been trademarked now. And now Megan wants Archetypes podcast for her podcast series with Spotify launching this summer. It doesn't take someone five minutes to understand. It's just something simple that any single person can understand. But the Daily Fail will try and blow things up into proportion and whip up, generate outrage for clicks and get some people in these talk shows that I saw today, basically on Twitter when I was perusing and looking at, you know, what's trending. When I found these kinds of people mocking Megan for doing what every normal person does, it just makes me sick. It, it just makes me sick and reinforces the need why the Sussex Squad family exists from all across the world. I will always be grateful for this family, this community, because 
These are the things that we have to constantly fight time and time again. We fight misinformation by giving out truth, the facts, something the daily fail that has been banned by Wikipedia by as an unreliable source will never do. Because imagine someone who practically works for the Rocher, as a member of the Rocher, writing these kinds of articles, this demeaning article, just to try and generate outrage. Because let's, let's face it, the purpose of this kinds of articles that they've wrote about, you know, trashing Megan for doing what normal people do, trademark, to protect their brands. This time, Megan is protecting the name Archetypes for her Spotify podcast so that no one else is able to use it in the context of podcasting. In the context of podcasting. The British media, the Royal Rotor, and the Royal Family are an embarrassment to Britain and it's all because of their penchant for lying, their racism, questionable association with pedophiles like the royal family, you know, with Jimmy Saville, Prince Charles, Prince Andrew, Jeffrey Epstein, and really sad, sick, disgusting obsession that they have with Meghan, Harry, and their children. It's just so, so disgusting. You know, what pissed me off is practically when I saw them openly starting to mock the children that is really really what practically pissed me off you know like they've been doing that to megan for so long they've been doing that to so long and it just goes to show and i want to repeat this it's important it just reinforces why harry and megan had to leave the uk because they've already begun bullying children even when megan gave birth to Elizabeth diana the uk tabloids turned it a name into a controversy just think about what would happen if they had stayed in the UK. Think about what they would have done to Archie and Elizabeth Diana. And that's why I'll forever be grateful that Harry and Meghan packed up their bags and left for a better life in California in Montecito. And thanks to the royal family for rejecting the half in, half out. It worked well for the Sussexes of Prince Harry and Meghan and clearly showcases what the royal family truly is. Not a family, but just a PR agency with questionable associations like Jimmy Saville with pedophiles. That's basically the virtues of the queen that we have all been told that people need to abide by, apparently. Now, family, the second thing that I wanted to talk about is the fact that yesterday, Harry and spoke to Invictus Games, you know, people will be participating in the Invictus Games from the UK. And he joked with former Sandhurst instructor in Invictus Games surprise call Shropshire, Shropshire Star. Now, Harry jokes with former Sandhurst instructor in Invictus Games surprise video call to them. He was actually encouraging the people in the Invictus Games to go ahead and do their best. And he also said that there was no excuse for you to perform badly because you've had two years to train. And we know that the event will take place in the Hague letter this month on April 16th to April 22. And I've said that we'll share a couple of things about the competition and the people involved in the competition. Now, the Duke of Sussex has joked with one of his instructors from Sandhurst, telling her that she used to shout at him so much. Harry surprised Invictus Games Team UK competitors with a video call as members gathered for a final training camp before the event takes place in the Netherlands later this month. The Duke founded the Games to aid the rehabilitation of injured or sick military personnel and veterans from all across the globe by giving them the challenge of competing in sporting events similar to the Paralympics. And thank you so much. I want to stop there and just say a, a little pause. Allow me to pause for just a short while and just say this. In Victor's Games, what Harry was being able to build for wounded veterans marks a huge, huge achievement that only can only be pulled off by someone as hardworking, as dedicated to the veteran community as Prince Harry has been and has always been. We know he loves the veteran community. 
We know he's always supported them. And even General Lloyd Austin, uh, U.S. Secretary of Defense, was actually, you know, thanked Harry for his service in the military, his tour of Afghanistan, and for founding the Invictus Games. It speaks a lot over the fact that United States of America veteran community has treated Harry so with so much dignity, so much dignity, so much respect, more than how Harry has been treated in the UK. But not just the tabloids, the farm, the institution, even the government itself. Well, a foreign government in the United States of America, the Secretary for Defense, Lloyd Austin, actually praises Harry for his work. The UK establishment trashes him because he just couldn't stand watching his wife being abused for the amusement of the establishment, the tabloids, and the farm. And it speaks a lot of the US veteran community. I know nothing is 100% perfect, but one thing is for sure the UK, the United States of America, knows well how to respect its veteran community. The UK, on the other hand, doesn't know that. They clearly don't know that. And what Harry has been able to build with the Invictus Games truly is amazing and fantastic. Now, after being delayed by the pandemic, the next staging of the international competition will take place in The Hague from April 16th to April 22. The room erupted in laughter when Harry commented on the fact the competitors had had two years to prepare for the games and that therefore fitness should not be an issue. I want to say that, you know, Ari was joking around with them and saying that, listen, you've you've had two years to prepare right now. So fitness should not be an issue anymore. And I'm cheering on every single competitor in the Vitas Games. One thing is for sure that I want to say to each and every single person who participate in the Vitas Games is that service is universal. And the fact that thank you for your service to your country and thank you for every single thing that you do. Service is universal. Once in service, always in service. And thank you so much for your support and protecting and fighting for the country's freedoms. Now, Prince Harry said this, and I quote, You realize that no one, not just you guys, no one's got an excuse for not being fit now, he joked. Harry also inquired about former Royal Army Physical Training Corps instructor Vic Wales, who was one of the instructing staff while he was a cadet, cadet at Sandhurst. I'd like to pause there for a while and just say this. Harry has done a great, great job. He served 10 years in Afghanistan. And after serving 10 years in Afghanistan, he came back to the UK and even built the Invictus Games from the ground up. And the virtual community from all across the world, I believe each and every single person knows the name of Prince Harry because of what he's done. He's natural. He's amazing. He's a good man and a great father and truly is a great soldier and has served his country. Unfortunately, his country, at the time of Harry's need, some people decided the establishment, the farm, the tabloids turned on him simply because he protected his mixed race wife and children from the abusive behavior of UK tabloids. And as I said, as I started this podcast, when, you know, what I saw today, them mocking Archie, Lil Bit Diana's names, when they found out that Megan was trademarking you know, ash types, which is something normal, which everybody does that. Every single person from all across the world. You can be sure about one thing. If the Daily Fail was angry about that, is that because they wanted to do something. Like, you know, the mock graphic images that they made uh, depicting the word ash types that they made, you know, on this, you know, TV shows, this bigoted shows that they have in the UK. When they were mocking them, it clearly goes to show why it's important to trademark something it's important to prevent yourself from being exploited which is what the tabloids the farm have been doing to megan and harry for so long and for so many years kudos to harry and megan for doing what is right and doing it the right way kudos to each 
and every single one of them. Now, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, founded the Games to aid the rehabilitation of injured or sick military personnel and veterans from all across the world. Now, is my PTI from Sandhurst in here somewhere? Harry asked, before spotting her and exclaiming, there she is. He said, I can't believe after how many years, 15 years, our paths are about to cross again. He used to shout at me so much. Harry appeared to be told that he needed it, as he then said, I needed it. Yeah, cool. That's also fair enough. Miss Wells from Newcastle is taking part in five events. Rowing, cycling, archery, powerlifting and athletics. She broke her back in a training accident 11 years ago and was medically discharged. Giving a team talk to the competitors, Harry said, For a lot of you, you've already, as far as I'm concerned, you've already won gold by just getting to this point. And I also have to repeat what Harry said. Truly, each and every single person that has ever served their country in what in one way or the other. Truly, you have already earned gold. Now, Harry continued by saying this. The fact that you are sitting there, now wearing that strip, and you are able to wear the Union Jack on your arm again, that means so much to every single one of you. Team UK captain Rachel Williamson, a 33-year-old Royal Air Force veteran from Rutland, Leicestershire, Leicester, Sure. told Harry on the call which took place on Saturday it's been a very long journey to get here but what an amazing team to do it with we've came through ups and downs with the pandemic and I know as soon as we all get there it will be just amazing to just look back at the team and see how far we've actually come it will be really really special afterwards she said the call was such a surprise but it was amazing to see prince harry again do you see what i'm talking about every single person in the veteran community despite the constant never-ending smear campaign towards harry and megan they all respect prince harry for his work for what he's been able to do in the veteran community even megan Despite being smeared for all these years, all these years, for all these years, from the moment her relationship to Prince Harry became public, still, people respect her. They show her love, much the anger of the powerful tabloids in the UK. They've never been able to take Harry and Meghan down, no matter the constant never-ending attempts to do it. Now, so she said that she was happy to see Harry and she said this and I quote, absolutely loved it. It was like speaking to another member of the Invictus family. He just says the right stuff. The main thing he said was, yes, you lost your uniform, but now you get to wear this brand new uniform again. And that hits all of us so deep. And congratulations, congratulations to each and every single person who is able to wear the Invictus Games uniform again. And we'll be seeing you on April 16th. And as I said, we'll be sharing the stories of the people involved in these games immediately the games begin and even probably before that as soon as possible before the game starts in the coming days. And let's support them and let us continue cheering for them. Congratulations on your Invictus Games uniform. Now, They've said this about Harry, that we know that he understands what we are coming from and where we've been. Former RAF Corporal Kelly Leonard, Team UK Vice Captain from near Shrewsbury, said after the call, I was nearly in tears when he gave us a team talk. It was really, really rousing. You know, whenever Harry sets into a room, he makes sure to touch the lives of every single person that are in that room. And we see that today. We see that many, many times. And it's just amazing that we get to watch it in real time. And thank you so much, Harry, for your service, for what you've been able to do and touching and impacting the lives of so, so many people. You truly are an inspiration to them. Just listening to them 
talk about you, how happy they are to see you. It means it means a lot even to us fans whenever we hear it because it just goes to show the fact that this mere campaign towards Harry and Meghan is a failure. No wonder they keep on continuing to do what they're doing. Now, Team UK Captain Rachel Williamson with Vice Captains Kelly Leonard and Corporal David Morris, the message was about what Invictus is about. The resilience on that journey, it was really wonderful to see him. Charity Health for Heroes is responsible for the selection, training and welfare of UK competitors. Last weekend, Team UK's friends and family cheered them on from the sidelines at the training cup, supported by the Royal British Legion. Team UK will compete in nine sports, athletics, archery, wheelchair basketball, cycling, powerlifting, indoor rowing, wheelchair rugby, swimming and sitting volleyball. Harry played an instrumental role in bringing the games to the UK in 2014 when 300 competitors from 13 countries took part in the inaugural competition in London. Do you see what Harry does? Do you see what he's been able to do for the veteran community? And no wonder it makes perfect sense why he is respected by the veteran community from all across the world and even the United States veteran community. Now, a trip to the Warrior Games in Colorado a year earlier had been the inspiration as Harry saw firsthand how sports helped inspire recovery and support rehabilitation of wounded troops. And he turned that into action by building the Invictus Games for wounded veterans. And for that, I have a huge, enormous amount of respect for Harry, for what he's been able to accomplish, what he's been able to do. And I cannot wait to see him at the Invictus Games on April 16th, which, day, which is the day that the Invictus Games begins. Do you see that? Do you see that? Every single person that has shared their story has in one way had his or their life been impacted by Prince Harry one way or the other. And members of the squad, that's practically what I wanted to, to talk about. And as I close this podcast with my final remarks about this, the things that I've talked about, is the fact that, first of all, those who don't understand or choose not to or are of the belief that birth order and incest, incest should rule above all, like what is happening in the UK, we wouldn't expect them to understand basic trademark and copyright law that is so simply simple to understand that someone like me even took 10 minutes to just do a research, a simple, simple research, just a simple research, and you will find the answer that Megan will be trademarking the word archetypes in the context of the podcast. So no one will be able, no one else will be able to use or call their podcast archetypes. Simple. It is not difficult to understand. It is very, very easy to understand. It's not difficult. That it is still easy to find the fact that there are, uh, there's, a, there's someone who's copyrighted the word archetypes barbershop in the context of the fact that this person owns a barbershop. The owner of that owns a barbershop. So no one else will be able to call their barbershops archetypes barbershop. It is not so difficult to understand if this UK tabloids could just take 10 minutes of research, which we know they, ne they never ever do, especially not the daily fail, they would have found out so, so easily. And even lawyers can simply even tell them because it's not something difficult to understand. And the obsession that I saw today from, from those kinds of people in those shows that I saw on Twitter, uh, show those UK shows that I saw on Twitter today, it just disgusted me. It really, really disgusted me. You know, what I saw is the fact that they even called a lawyer who explained to them, the lawyer explained to them the fact that 
having trademarking a name, a word, is something normal that every single person does. I told you what I saw today, like the fact that Chris Jenner, I saw in Keeping Up With The Kardashian, had trademarked the name Momager, the word Momager. She's the mother of the Kardashians and also the manager who manages the business interest. So she called, she's commonly referred to as the Momager. It is not so difficult to understand how trademark works. But it is this obsession and the fact that even after being explained by the lawyer, they continue to publicly insult, you know, Megan on their UK shows. Showcases their obsession and the sickness that we've become so accustomed to how these tabloids behave. And it's just, it's just, it's just so wrong. It's just so wrong. And it reinforces the need and the decision made by Harry and Megan to leave. I mean, even after a lawyer explained that it's normal to trademark words, they still continued in that show in the UK that I won't mention the name. They continue with their ignorance. And these people were making a fool for the, of themselves on national TV. Just those people in that UK show were making a fool of themselves on national TV just in an attempt to, con to continue the hate for profit campaign against Megan, Duchess of Sussex, simply because Megan wouldn't take abuse and smile for the cameras and suffer, which is what the tabloids and the farm wanted Megan to experience for daring to marry a white prince in an all white institution. We get it, we get it, we understand. Megan packed up her bags and she left. She's back home. In America, leave her alone. Just leave her alone. Let this woman live in peace. If you think that you'll be racist in peace to this UK shows, the tabloids, the farm, if you think you'll be racist in peace towards Megan, you are in for a big surprise. You won't be racist in peace towards Megan. We may not have been able to do something for Princess Diana or Caroline Flack, but one thing is for sure, we shall protect and defend Megan Duchess of Sussex always and forever. Every single day, 24 hours a day, every single day for the rest of our lives, as long as it takes. As long as it takes. And I cannot wait even for the UK tablets to get more salty, a bitter, and angry when Megan gets called a billionaire. I can't wait for that day to come. Taylor Swift even has trademarked the words 1989, which are the names of our albums, Ready For It, 1989 Taylor's version, Christmas Tree Farm, Blank Space, Big Reputation, and I'll write your name. She's trademarked those words, which are features for a album, Folklore. She's trademarked those names for her album, Folklore Album. She's trademarked those names, those words. It's so easy to understand, but these people are actually trying to, to showcase their ignorance. These rotter, the tabloids, showcasing their ignorance. We won't allow them, we won't allow them to be racist towards Megan in peace. That is for sure. That is for sure. We'll spread, whenever they spread misinformation, we'll spread facts. And we shall showcase the facts of the entire world for every single person to see it. Apple, for instance, as I said, trademarked the name Apple, yet it existed since the age of Adam and Eve. First, they say she was plagiarizing. Now they use Megan for outrage and clicks when real scandals are unraveling at all palaces, including all the skeletons are coming out. Charles' connection with a pedophile, Jimmy Saville, Prince Andrew, Jeffrey Epstein, Prince William's failed disastrous tour. Complete failure, blaming every single person but himself. And after this Netflix came out, now they're coming up with this as an outrage? It isn't an outrage. This is what every single person from all across the world does. It is something which is normal. And we won't let them get away with it. One thing is for sure. You, we won't let them 
get away with every single thing that they keep on getting away with. The application, as I end this podcast, is for a trademark relating to podcasts and other downloadable downloadable audio in the fields of casual treatment of women and stereotypes facing women. I want to repeat that for every single person to understand and let it reach the ones in the Daily Fail and the UK tabloids. The application is for a trademark relating to audio, to, to, to podcasts and other downloadable audio in the fields of casual treatment of women and stereotypes facing women. So unless you're planning on setting up complete competing podcast, unless you are starting to you are planning on starting a competing podcast with the same name, you will be entirely unaffected. Megan entering and leaving the UK has truly shown a spotlight on that country's psychophantic and calculated royal reporters, or should I say pirates with press cards. Now the whole world sees them for what they are. The tabloids, the rotter, the farm are laughing stocks to the entire world. They have no morals and we won't let them get away with what they're doing to Harry and Meghan. And in 2017, there was not even the squad. The squad didn't exist. All we did was go to the Daily Mail comment section to fight a bunch of racists targeting Megan. And now in less than five years, we have turned into a rapid response team able to counter any rotter misinformation within two seconds. And I'm extremely proud and happy of being part of this community. It's the fact that when they came for Megan by publishing this these kinds of, you know, the bogus articles that they've published about Megan doing something normal, that is to trademark the word archetypes, which basically every single person trademarks a name to protect their brand, something normal which every single person do. The fact that squadies from all across the world had already fought the misinformation, fought the misinformation, makes me so, so proud to be a member of this community. I am so humbled and I'm so proud. Let's keep on fighting because eventually I can be sure we will win because good will always triumph over evil. I believe that 100% always and forever. Now, ladies and gentlemen, April 16th, the Invictus Games begins. And on the summer, we have Megan's podcast called Archetypes coming in, launching. And I cannot wait for April 16th, Invictus Games and also the summer. Because get in, get in, get in family, get in on this hug because from all across the world, because good things, big things are coming from Harry and Megan. And I cannot wait to see what they have in store for all of us. With that and so much more, thanks so much for tuning in to our podcast. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and supporting our growing family on YouTube. Kindly hit that like and subscribe button for daily and consistent content. And sayonara family, I love you. And thank you for always supporting this channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Sayonara, love you. Subscribe and like this video. And always support us. Thank you so much for each and every single member of the squad. May our families be blessed and may God bless each and every single one of you and all your families and loved ones. Have a fantastic day, this amazing community. Love you, family, always and forever. Hello and welcome back to Sasko Family TV. As I end this podcast, I'd like to thank you so much for watching our video. It means the absolute world to us. Kindly like, subscribe and support our ever-growing family on YouTube. Kindly hit that like and subscribe button for daily and consistent content. We post every single day and it will mean the absolute world to us if you support our channel by liking, subscribing and leaving a comment below. If you wish to donate to our channel, kindly send to our PayPal email briankiputo95 at gmail.com in our description box or to our Netella account. Also, briankiputo 95 at gmail.com. Your support will mean the absolute world to us, with PayPal being the preferred 
option for this channel kindly stay tuned to our next video and thank you thank you so much to every single person that has ever supported our family with so much love stay tuned to our next video and i'm hoping that you're having a great fantastic day and this podcast made you feel much much better have a great day family thank you